Ladies and gentlemen, what's going on? Thank you very much is right. I'm going to take you on a little history lesson slash trip. In the final game of the 2020 season, the Philadelphia Eagles, they tanked. They pulled Jalen Hurts in the fourth quarter. They lost with his backup, Nate Sudfeld. There was much screaming led by Giants coach Joe Judge, who played the Eagles that day. Meanwhile, Eagles coach Doug Peterson, he was ultimately fired soon after. And when you look back, a win would have given Philly the ninth overall pick, but a loss meant the sixth overall pick. Three months later, the Eagles traded that sixth pick to Miami. In exchange, Philly ended up with the 12th and a 2022 first rounder. Bear with me. I'm getting to the point. The Eagles traded up. They got Devontae Smith. In 2022, they took defensive tackle Jordan Davis, 13th overall. Miami took Jalen Waddle. But check that out. You got two good, one borderline great players out of that one move down because you lost. And meanwhile, the Eagles went 4-10-1 in 2020. They were in the Super Bowl in 2023, 2022. Uh, and Smith was a big part of that. Peterson, he's now sitting pretty in Jacksonville. And Judge does something for the Patriots. I'm not sure exactly what. Um, should the Patriots try to lose? Honestly, I, I think at this point, they don't even have to try. But that scenario is worth remembering. Let's have a show to remember. Here's the game plan for today. So, so needy. There's so many places they need stuff. Draft scratchies. We're going to get into... Some of the places where it's the best bet at the top of the draft and maybe the worst bet. Bring back Mac. Hold your fire. Uh, no, nobleman. No bill, man. Uh, and here's Andrew Callahan. Uh, speaking of nobleman, Andrew Callahan from the Boston Herald. What's the, what's the climate down in Gillette? You had an interesting conversation with one of the defensive players on Sunday. I did. Spoke to Devon Gottschow, who told me, among many things, uh, it's bleeping frustrating dealing with this offense. And he feels going into Thursday's game in Pittsburgh, they have to hold them to zero points. And this was the same commentary I heard from Adrian Phillips after the loss to the Giants. So suffice to say, a lot of frustration down there. But today in the locker room, Tom, I got to tell you, it was like a Tuesday for everyone else going into the office. You want to go in? Sure. You want to get your work done and get the hell out. Because I think there were maybe two, three, four players left by the time the rest of us media were still in there. And uh, honestly, I don't blame them. Tumbleweeds, tumbleweeds. All right, it's time now for Quick Fire. It's presented by your local New England Honda dealers. Let's check this out. These are some of the offensive players who are signed in 2024 at some key positions. Quarterback, you giddy about that? No, you're not. Wide receiver, these are the guys who are under contract for next year. Uh, Douglas gets me a little bit excited. Otherwise, not so much. Tight end, there are none. They have no tight ends. Offensive tackle, it's under contract. Calvin Anderson and Vidarian Lowe and then some other guys have been kicking around out there. Just so, so many holes. That's what's daunting, Andrew, as you look at this offseason. You're talking about the draft. You're talking about money that they have to spend in free agency. But the cupboard's virtually bare already. That's the thing. Like, if you're building a house, this is not just we're going to upgrade the man cave. We're going to redo the basement. This is you need a foundation. You need structure. You need everything about this. And I look at that list. It's not only just that Pop Douglas, a sixth-round rookie receiver, is the only player that excites you. Mm -hmm. It's that he might be the only guy on that list guaranteed a roster spot next season. And the second most likely is Judas Schuster, not because he's lighting the world on fire. It's because the Patriots would just love to light his contract on fire, but it's fire retardant and that they would have to take on about $9 million in dead money if they just cut him. So it is going to be a blank slate this offseason. Same thing exists really with Devontae Parker. Meanwhile, on Sports Sunday the other night, Albert Breer had this to say about Bill O'Brien's role in the offense and Bill Belichick's maybe mingling hands? Mingling? I've talked to people inside the organization who feel like Bill O'Brien isn't allowed to run the offense that he that he brought in here. Who's running it? That Bill's Bill Bill basically tells him like this is what this is what I want this week. This is what we're looking for, and he works within those constraints. That's Bill Belichick all the way. Right and there. Bill Belichick like that's, has his and, 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 all over this offense. Like I mean, as recently as last night, I somebody said to me in defense of Bill O'Brien, like. Like, I don't think he's able to run everything that he learned as the head coach at Houston, as the head coach at Penn State, working at Alabama. Like, all of the newfangled stuff that's, you know, where the game is going, like some of that stuff, he's not able to run it to the level maybe he's learned to run it. All right, so I think what people are left with is the impression that this is Bill O'Brien. Here, Bill Belichick, take a look at my game plan. And Bill goes, that ain't working. And I don't think there's any way in God's green earth that that's what's happening. Now, are there restrictions? Certainly. 
I think that they might be related to, look, we're not going to do that with this quarterback because right now we can't afford to do that or these players aren't playing well enough and I'm going to bigfoot his usage. But the notion that he'd say, yeah, we're not doing a jet motion here and we're not going to do this there, I don't buy that. Andrew? No, I don't either. And two things on this. For as long as Bill Belichick has been there, he starts his week on Wednesdays when you have a game on Sunday, telling the coaching staff, look, this is how I think the game is going to play out. This is how we need to manage it. That goes for offense, defense, and special teams, as we always hear. Complimentary football. Number two, and Albert reported this earlier this year and something that I can confirm myself, is that Bill O'Brien has essentially been the head coach of the offense. So he'll get that vision that I just outlined. Like Belichick mm -hmm. says, this will be a 6 nothing, 10-6 to game against the Chargers, work within those parameters. But then he's given the keys. He can drive wherever he wants within this map of 10 and 6. And so I, I don't totally buy that. Yeah, and I talked to Albert, too, and he, in speaking with him, said there's more guardrails as opposed to hands-on meddling, not middling, whatever the hell I said previously. <laughs> Mingling. Meanwhile, <laughs> um, the Patriots will play the Steelers in primetime Thursday night, and they will face former number two pick Mitch Trubisky out of the University of North Carolina. So this is what you can get sometimes for a number two pick, a guy who after five years in the league is relegated to a backup, but he has 31-24 record, well in the plus, touchdowns to interceptions is his passer rating. So does Mitch Trubisky stand, as the Patriots sit with the number two overall pick right now, as a cautionary tale, Andrew, or is that what you're sometimes going to get when you're drafting at the top of the draft? No, that's just sometimes what you get. But it is amusing to me, at least, that you have the Patriots now tracking for the number two overall pick and another quarterback from North Carolina staring at them at the face. Very tall, handsome. Drake May, it would be, not Mitch Trubisky. But the real issue with Trubisky was not how accurate he was or how he moved. It was he had one season's worth of sample. It was That was his only season starting at North Carolina. Drake May is at least a two-year starter. It's always a gamble at the top. you got to roll those dice. But he did fit the suit. Mitch Trubisky, 1 million percent yes. fit the suit. Big, strong strapping and a jawline that would just not quit. Here's Jabril Peppers, who's turned into my favorite Patriot in 2023, speaking the other day about the assailing words being directed at his head coach, Bill Belichick. One of the best coaches I've ever had. You know, one of the best coaches that ever coached, period. Um, and like I said, we're not getting it done for him. Week in and week out, he comes in here every week, tells us what we have to do to win this game. And when it comes up in the game and we don't do it, um, every phase of of the game is how can you blame Bill? He, you know, that's, that's on us. Mm, well, yeah, I felt the same way. A little bit of the Larry David gif. Um, Yes, you can say that the defense absolutely does its job week in and week out, has its three keys that Bill hands them and carries them out to a T, but they don't have the humans on offense to carry out the keys that they were willing to carry out or trying to carry out, even in week one and week two. That was a trying to be explosive offense, Andrew, and now they just turtle and try and go into a rope-a-dope for 60 minutes. Right, and it, it's not only just Bill Belichick, the head coach. It's Bill Belichick, the GM. We've been banging on this same drum. Receivers over here, offensive tackles over there, quarterback management, the scheme, the coaching staff. He's responsible for everything. So as we gave him for 20 years the flowers and the congratulations and all of the credit, now when things have been as bad as they are at 2-10, and 10, of course you look at the guy at the top. So it's a nice defense of Drew Peppers, who's having a great season. Uh, but right now, half the team's not working, and that's on the head coach. Andrew, continued good news for anybody sh appearing on this show. Um, Kay Adams was on the Manning cast last night for Monday Night Football. There she is. Yeah, right there with the Manning brothers. One, a Patriot heartbreaker. One, a longtime foil for Tom Brady. And there's our former Quicksilence co-host, who will eventually uh, pop up again this season, I'm quite sure. But, well, it's just a trampoline for you. You can just launch yourself right into that from where you are. Well, I got to update my uh, quarter zip. She brought one last night. That was the best part Heady of the Manning cast was Kay, Mo Kay Adams in a quarter zip. Heady move by Kay. Uh, meanwhile, we do have from the stands because people have a lot to say. We've got a bunch of polls in this program because right now I want to hear from you. Question was this, and today's poll is presented by Shaw's, perfecting the art of fresh. The Patriots have scored more than 20, 20 points just once. Think about that. 29 against the Bills. Who do you hold most responsible? Start at the bottom, Belichick in the personnel department. Then you go to the offensive line and the weapons. Then you go to Mac. Then you go to Bill O'Brien. I am fully in uh, concert with all those votes right there. Meanwhile, Mac Jones cookies year after year. Bill forgets he has an offense to take care of. Here's the only acceptable answer to this poll. Next up, it's my buddy Chris. Belichick slash personnel. They ruined the quarterback. Didn't address the offensive line. 
didn't surround Mac or anybody with guys who can get open and make plays. Legit. Ryan, worst offensive group in the league, all personnel and poor drafting. And here's KJ by 13. It's easily Mac Jones. If Mac made a mistake or has ever trailed, it's a well, he's not wrong about this. It's a guaranteed loss. You can't win with someone who loses all ability with adversity. Simple. Henry, Pop, and Bourne are solid NFL talents. So is Brown and Onwenu. Andrew, would you have any kind of a different vote there? Should Bill O'Brien shoulder more than 4% of the blame? And I guess you'd be asking, does he shoulder more than Bill Belichick? That's absurd. But do you think that we should be putting more at his doorstep and saying you, you needed to make more of this? Yeah, of course. I mean, I'm not going to be out there saying Bill O'Brien is more responsible than even Mac Jones or Bill Belichick for this entire mess. But when you were the offensive coordinator for an offense that is scoring 12.3 points per game, an offense not seen since 2011, yeah, you're going to deserve to take your fair share of arrows. And so sling them in his direction. I'm not going to jump in front of that. I would just say, you go back to August, I wrote it at the time, Bill O'Brien was calling games then in the preseason, games that did not matter, like he knew his offensive line was a disaster. And it was for mm -hmm. the first four weeks. And in those four weeks, Mac Jones fell apart. So this is really just a series of dominoes that started yep. with the offensive line, which starts with Bill Belichick. And that's why I still blame him at the top above everybody else. Yep. It's funny. I, I really can't bring myself, having looked at it from the granular level, I can't bring myself to blame Bill O'Brien at all. It's like the corporal Ooh. level looking down. Not at, at all. At the branch. No. Zero? The, no, zero. At zero? the branch. It's, it's the corporate level looking down at the branch office and saying, your production's down. How come? Because our friggin' factory burned to the ground. That's why. All right, coming up after the break, we'll get into a little bit more on the Patriots' backup quarterback, Mac Jones, as we go deep on what the Patriots will do at the top of the draft. Growth Potential brought to you by Dr. Matthew Lepresti. Look younger, feel younger, get your hair back with Leonard Hair Transplant Associates. Meanwhile, growing opportunities for the Patriots to get the number one overall pick. Carolina holds it. It actually belongs to the Bears. So Carolina doesn't care if it starts winning games and forfeits the number one overall pick. The Patriots, really, look at that. I mean, six of one, half dozen of the other, right? Patriots' schedule is probably harder because they get the Chiefs in there. The Jets are a patsy to, to an extent, but the Bucks kind of are too, but not really. I mean, it. I guess Carolina's got a tougher schedule overall. Meanwhile, let's just jump into my slant right now. Watch out! Um, ladies and gentlemen, think about this. You're picking somewhere in the top three. You are going to consider quarterbacks, wide receivers, or offensive line for your team. Which one is going to give you the best opportunity to hit? Or which one is going to give you the best opportunity for a big payoff? Let's take a look at these positions since 2018. The players who have been drafted in the top 10 at each position. Bryce Young, nothing yet. CJ Stroud, good player. Trevor Lawrence, good player. Wilson, Lance, Murray's a coin flip. Daniel Jones doesn't cut it. Baker Mayfield doesn't cut it. Sam Darnold doesn't cut it. Josh Rosen was in there as well. He didn't cut it. Meanwhile, let's look at offense, uh, excuse me, wideouts. Drake London, eh, eh. This is, again, top 10 guys. Garrett Wilson, good player. Jamar Chase, good player. Devontae Smith, good player. Are there any more wideouts? And now here's your offensive lineman. Bam. Paris Johnson, good player. Uh, Iki, good. Evan Neal stinks. Sewell's good. Thomas, good. Uh, Quentin Nelson and Mike McGlinchey. Okay, how many of those players are taking you directly to a Super Bowl? On the offensive line, none. Joe Burrow, yeah. Maybe at some point, Tua was the missing link for the Miami Dolphins to get them to that spot. But you had to have the Jalen Waddle, and you had to have the Tyree Kill around him, plus a free agent tackle that they signed for Big Doe. So to me, I look at this whole situation, Andrew Callahan, and I say, if I'm the New England Patriots and I am in the top three, I am 1 million percent considering trading out of that spot especially if it's one or two, and letting somebody else, especially because of the needs we've talked about in this program, with expiring contracts, jumping out of there, going ahead and adding Marvin Harrison Jr., who's a wide receiver, and the best available offensive tackle. Get yourself set up there. Spend well in free agency. Find your quarterback later on. Tommy, are you going to interview to replace Bill? A couple months? Do you know? I mean... There's points at which I start to overinflate my own knowledge to the point where I would think that wouldn't be a bad idea. But no. uh, Because I was hoping for a no. You can't do it. 
The only reliable place on planet Earth where you can find a franchise quarterback oh, is in the it. top 10 stop of the it. draft. That's it. How do you know they're where top else 10? Are you, where else are you going to find one? How do you know they're top 10 quarterbacks? Well, Zach Wilson wasn't a top 10. Trey Lance wasn't a top 10. Josh Rosen wasn't a top 10. But all these teams rolled the dice, thought they fit the suit. Mitch Trubisky, Andrew, you're going to make the same mistake all those teams did. Sam Darnold. Not guaranteed. You are leaving out Trevor Lawrence. C.J. Stroud, Joe Burrow, Josh Allen. And here's the thing. We don't even have to talk about top ten. We can just talk top three because if the Patriots lose on Thursday night, they are virtually guaranteed, as I see it, unless you think they're going to beat the Chiefs, win no, no, no. the Bills, they're... to get a top three pick. And that's where you get the Burrows, the Lawrences, the Strouds. Like, that's the, the hot spot for them. And you are not going anywhere the in the modern Lances. NFL without a franchise quarterback. That's the whole thing. This is a lottery ticket. You're not. Yes. But you don't put the roof on before you have the house in. And that's the roof. Well, it's not the roof. It's the whole house. <laughs> you got to get the foundation. The ceiling is a roof. Look, you need the quarterback. How long have we done this? Like, you are going to continue to wander the NFL wilderness with all these teams you made fun of for years and years and years and years. And all you need, even if you're the Bengals, even if you're the Jaguars, even if you are the freaking Texans, is to get that guy. Because the power of the quarterback has never been greater. Just ask all of those franchises. How the Eagles do? One who's been to a Super Bowl. The Texans now going to the playoffs. Okay. How well, how'd the Eagles do it? How the Texans do it? They had a defense and they had... Um, offensive line and Excellent. draft picks that they hit on. Yeah, the Eagles got lucky. How many other second-round quarterbacks can you identify a name other than Jalen Hurts who have made it big? I mean, that, that's how thin it is. But the thing is, 30 to 40 percent when drafting Jimmy, a quarterback. Jimmy Garoppolo plug and find. play in San Francisco. Jimmy Garoppolo. He What's was he? took him to a Super Bowl. Have we seen him in the last four years? Yeah, but if, that's the roster. point. If you have a good enough group of pieces around that position, it's virtually plug and play. So get it's somebody not. in there who can pick a wide out. It, yeah, great. If you can have an all-pro running back at tight end and wide receiver, which back. is the, the 49ers offense, and what tells you the Patriots, you know, are going to be able to do that? It's a process, though, and the biggest piece of this puzzle is the quarterback. This is trying to win in the NBA without a superstar handling the ball at all times. You just have to go up and do it. And if you swing and miss, good news. You're going to be back at the same spot, and you get a second crack at the apple. All right, 2003 Pistons forever. <laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> remember them, right? Oh, yeah. Not a single superstar. Give me Tayshawn. Uh, meanwhile, if the Patriots use the top pick on a quarterback, is there value to keeping Mac Jones as a placeholder? No, he's got to go. I'm sorry. 61% of you say that. And 38.9% say, yeah, it makes total sense. I think I'm in the latter. Here's some comments from you folks. Pat's Buzz, that's the situation you probably need to bring in a veteran quarterback to mentor the draft pick. Putting Mac in that role as he currently looks mentally broken would not be ideal. I, I agree. But until you get that right vet, you keep him. Meanwhile, we got another guy here, and it goes by the name of, where's that next comment? I'm filibustering. Oh, it's my guy, Brian. Makes complete sense, Tom. That's why I use Brian every week. He always agrees. <laughs> then the rookie outplays Mac during training camp of the season, and you can make the transition. Random Pats fan. Got to get rid of him. Need a starter for the first few weeks. Get a Jacoby Brissett type. All right, Andrew, what are you going to do? Do you have to get rid of Mac before next year or do you trade him in the draft well first of all i'm not going to take another crack at an apple which tells you what i just said is how often i really eat fruit you're an apple uh, cracker yeah cracking those apples uh no more cracks at this apple for mac jones and it's not even about him it's just what he's experienced this is a guy who needs his confidence back you are not going to build that up in the same place that it was torn down game after game benching after benching guys in the locker room have told me yeah they see no confidence from him you cannot lead in that kind of way. He's got to go somewhere else, build himself back up. He's not going to find success here in New England. Bill, do you want to stay here and keep coaching the Patriots? Yeah, I'm looking forward to this week, getting ready for the Steelers. Does that mean he doesn't want to? Uh, meanwhile, here's Mike Giardi, handsome head of hair on him. On Bill Belichick, you know what has to happen next. Forget about an elegant solution. The time is now. To go on with this charade is insulting to the fan base, and if Bill wants to hold a grudge, that's on him. Bill Belichick should be fired immediately, in Mike Giardi's opinion. Look, to me, there's a couple of reasons that ain't going to work. The main one being, you fire Bill, you make him a free agent. You're going to get nothing in return. That means that both Bill Belichick and Tom Brady will have been let go with nothing coming back. So to me, that's not a great idea. Meanwhile, furthermore, you're going to be in a position where you're not going to be able to have the honorable, dignified interaction with Bill Belichick post-Patriots. And there's going to be chaos for the next five games. Chaos already? Yeah, kind of, but it'll get that much worse. Meanwhile, here's a Twitter question um, that I put out. Four years ago, Patriots fans credited Bill Belichick over Tom Brady for the uh, Patriots' run of success by almost 2-1. to one. I put a poll out then. 
There were 21,000 humans and bots who responded. If you voted for Bill Belichick then, has your opinion changed and why? Ryan, I'm a fully changed guy. It's obvious who can do more with less and it ain't Bill. Pete, I was consistently part of number two for years. Now after four years of evidence, the answer is clear at least for the level of success. Maybe 50-ish year old Bill Belichick was a greater part of the early run, but for the length and level over the whole period, it's Brady. And he threw a full stop on there so that you know he's serious. Roderick Melvin, love this guy. Tough question, Tom. Yeah, Brady made the plays, but Belichick was the architect. He made the pick at 199. Without that, none of the six championships would have happened. Fair point. Random Pats fan, the inability for Bill to adapt his roster to the fact the greatest quarterback of all time left has been baffling almost as if he was dared to throw darts to make his decision on the offensive side of the ball in terms of roster management and coaching decisions ladies and gentlemen it's 30 seconds it's been a lot of tomfoolery while i was reading these behind the camera we had mike giardi we had trinity casey andrew callahan just fooling around because they're itching to get up here for early edition in a moment i'm personally itching to get over to that set Thursday, because we will have pregame live prior to the Patriots game against the Pittsburgh Steelers. We'll be ready to go. Uh, I think I'm going to get Edelman on the podcast this week, too, so keep your eyes peeled for that.